Debian 12 is here and it brings in a lot of changes. I'm not just going to cover GNOME but give a comprehensive idea about all the desktop environment updates, new apps and packages and most importantly, the big kernel leak. Debian was founded by Jan Ashley Murdoch. The name Debian comes from his then girlfriend Deborah Lynn and his own first name. Everything about Debian is pure stability and it reflects even on their release cycle which is not regular. Okay, let us begin with the kernel in brief which has been updated to 6.1 from the 5.1 series. This means you have now native support for Rust, better memory handling under pressure, faster BTRFS performance, support for a bunch of devices like older Android phones, Sony Xperia, PinePhone Pro including driver support for the keyboard case to newer hardware like Apple Silicon and the continued work for improving support for Intel Arc series GPUs. X4 file system has also got some update. It benefits from a flurry of fixes, cleanups and tune-ups and there are also some other changes coming up. As you know Debian installer is now the recommended way of Debian installation. It is around 700 MBs and while the interface looks quite classic, there are some changes. Debian now enables certain third-party repos or what you might call not open source repos to install drivers for a wide range of hardwares by default. So no more problems with Bluetooth or Wi-Fi devices failing to get detected and at the same time avoiding graphics related issues. This can be turned off through command line if you ever need before the installation. Native installer also contains all the basic installation features like guided partitioning. It really makes the Debian installation a lot more transparent and robust. You will also get a wide range of options to choose from in the desktop category. I'm selecting all of them via for making this video comprehensive. Net installers are good but they fail to provide that much loved live systems doesn't mean you don't get live system ISOs, they are also available. Okay, let us begin with GNOME. It has the usual greetings messages with keyboard layout, privacy, accounts and more. But more important is that it has a new refreshing look with GTK4 Libadvita, bringing Debian at par with other distributions in looking modern. You get GNOME 43.4 which isn't bad since the 44th version is the latest one. You only miss out changes in the control center like background apps inclusion and some tweaks and changes including the file manager tree view and thumbnails in the file picker. There is a lot of inconsistencies in theming since the transition is not complete from GTK 3 to 4 but you do get a lot of GTK 4 apps but that does not necessarily mean you lose complete control over custom theming. GTK 4 apps can be themed. Install the theme like you would do in older versions of GNOME by copying the folder to the dot themes directory and then just look for the gdk4 folder inside the theme folder and replace the contents of the gtk4 in dot config directory apply the theme from tweaks or use console wait for a few seconds or restart gnome and here you have consistent gdk3 and 4 theming along with a little pop of colors because of the theme that i used anyway debian wallpaper is here which they call the emerald and it kind of projects a Vista look, but you have other options for other wallpapers, so which are from GNOME and they are dynamic. So you can change it to dark or light mode and they will change accordingly. To know more about GNOME 43, watch the video from the cards appearing on the top where I have covered the video in details. If you want to know about GNOME 44, I have another video for you as well. Debian 11 was having GNOME 3.38, 43.4 is many versions of a jump and modern GNOME is such a flowy smooth software feels like butter, my favorite desktop for this striking amount of stability. You have other flavors of the same modern GNOME like GNOME Classic looking like this with the top menu for applications and quick launch options for files, calendars and the quick settings control center navigable by keyboard arrow keys and a bottom section catering to the activities and workspaces. Then we have GNOME flashback sporting an older GNOME look from the GNOME 2 era. Kind of looks the same when compared to GNOME classics but this is the older form and yes it does look out of place with the modern GNOME applications. You get this clipboard history as an extra along with hide all windows in the bottom part. Basically it also does look like Mate without the green and system menu. All the GNOME desktops use Wayland by default along with provisions for XORG if you ever need. KDE Plasma 5.27 edition is shipped compared to the previous 5.20 in Debian 11. This is full 7 versions of a jump. Also as you know already it is the final release of Plasma 5 after which 
Plasma 6 would start shipping. Kitty was my favorite desktop environment and with 5.27 you get access to tiling windows and you can create your own layouts, organize them in, in place and snap windows whenever you need. Additionally, you have improved discover pages that let you search over all categories, changes in system settings, key runner, color picker, panel trees and many more. More importantly, you get better Wayland support from KDE's end, but yeah, you also get an option to use XOG. Plasma 5.27 is also good news for power users. Now you have multi-monitor overhaul, global shortcuts for terminal commands, do not disturb toggle from the command line and many more. Check out the comprehensive Plasma 5.27 video from my channel by clicking the i button on the top. Then you have Cinnamon which looks quite bland out of the box but yeah, in the same way you can apply custom themes. Anyway, this is the 5.6.8 version of Cinnamon and it is the latest one. Cinnamon has a number of new features, updates and tweaks sporting a more modern look. You don't get any of those redesigned mint icons since this is Debian. There is no installation of the Bibata modern classic mouse icon with the rounded corners that mint uses by default but you do get other themes and it looks a lot less of a mess than Linux Mint. As for XFCE, the version is 4.18, the next version in line is 4.20 which probably won't release until 2024 end. Other versions like the Mate is 1.26.0, shipped open box at 3.6.1, LXQT version 1.2.0, LXQT even provides the option to choose from a variety of window managers if you have multiple of them installed. Last but not the least, we have LXDE 11. Gnome app versions have been updated to 43 to match the Gnome desktop version as said earlier. Now you are also having the privilege of enjoying GTK4. Apps and packages have also been updated. Your Firefox version, the default browser, is now having version 102.12.0 ESR having several security and quality improvements. LibreOffice version is 7.4, however 7.5 is the latest version according to their website and several packages have also been updated. Here is a comprehensive list of the updated packages. While it is true that Debian is not the absolute latest and you know what you're getting right because if you want the absolute latest and bleeding edge you should be going for Arch and if you want something more stable you might be going for Debian. So it depends. That's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do like, share and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.